Hi guys, this is week 21. It's the second cycle of the year, the beginning of the third month. So last week was strike test. This month we are working on putting, putting stuff together. The theme for this month, which you'll be getting your strike for is accuracy. So we're gonna be doing a lot of drills based on accuracy of stances, stance transitions, targeting punches and kicks. And for the karate kids, it's honesty. So I want you to think about that. We'll talk about it when we get further into the class. So we're gonna start off with cross jacks. And then we're gonna move on to punches. I'm just checking to make sure the video is actually recording. Keep your feet moving. A couple weeks ago, I had to do this whole thing over again because I pushed the button and it didn't start recording. I don't want to do that again. Okay, next one, squat, front kick, squat, front kick. And then knees. When you do your knees, think about keeping the knee that you're on bent a little bit. Other side, make sure the standing knee's bent. Next one, I want to get back here so you can see what I'm doing. I touch the floor, I hop, I touch the floor. So my body is coming completely upright as I do the hop. So the work mostly comes not just from the jump, but from the up and down. And kicks. And back to cross jacks. Punches. Think about picking your target, which ideally should be the head of someone who's the same height as you are. So your hands are up, you're protecting your head, and your punches are going from higher than your shoulders straight out to face height. Or not necessarily straight in the case of the hook and the uppercut, but head height. And squat and front kick. back and forth, touch the floor. Thank 
kicks. I know it's not the same kicks I did on the first set. It doesn't matter, I don't care what kicks you do, as long as you're kicking properly for the whole 30 seconds. And time. Okay, where you're going to stretch, reach up, over to one side, other side, and straight out to the front. Back is flat here, chin is up. Reach for the floor. Over to one side, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. Down in the side stretch. Both heels on the floor here. If you need more stretch, put your elbow inside the bent knee and push it back. And turn, stretch your hip flexor. Make sure that your ankle is out past your knee. Again, if you need more, Put the elbow inside this knee and push it out. Straighten out the legs. So all my toes are facing that way. My knees are straight. My chin is up. And reach your chest down toward the front knee. You should feel that primarily in the hamstring of your front leg. Come to the center. Toes straight forward. Push your knees out. Other side, grab your ankle, chest to your knee, not your head, keep your chin up. Down in a side stretch. Turn, stretch your hip flexor. And straighten out your legs. Knees are straight, chin is up, chest down toward your front leg. Have a seat, put your feet, you can't see them. Let me fix the camera. The problem with the camera is either you can see my head when I'm close or you can see my feet when I'm not close. There's no, there's no happy medium because if I turn it the other way, which is taller, then you won't be able to see me when I go to the angles. So this is sort of a lose-lose situation. But you want to put your feet here like this. The goal is to have your ankle, your knee, your butt cheek, your butt cheek, your knee, your ankle, all on the floor. I can almost do it on this side. Um, can't do it at all on the other side. I'm rocking back and forth a little bit. And then switch to the other side. <clears throat> so ankle, knee, butt cheek, but you, I can't do it on this side, way up in the air. Knee, ankle. Everything should be on the floor. If you can't, your hips are tight. And rock back and forth a little bit. And then you're gonna put your feet here and you're gonna put your hands on the floor. I'll do it this way so you can see. And I'm gonna straighten out my knees. Then I'm gonna bend them. Heels on the floor. Hands on the floor, straighten your knees. Down. Heels on the floor. Hands down, straighten up. Okay, conditioning. Um, this is important. You're, you do karate because it's fun. You also do karate so that if you have to, you can defend yourself. And if you get hit and you're initially in, immediately stuck in wind, or if, if you have to defend yourself for more than 15 or 20 seconds and you don't have the conditioning to do it, you're gonna die no matter how good your karate is. Okay, so we're gonna start here. We're gonna do alternating lunges. Behind right here, I step back to do lunges. I feel like I have more balance that way. You wanna step back far enough that this knee is over the ankle. You don't wanna be here. That puts a lot of stress on the knee. So I'm gonna step back, step back.
Okay, the next one we're going to do, these are called sit-outs. Um, I'll show them to you from all directions. I'm going to start here. My hands are on the floor, my feet are on the floor. I'm kind of in the position I would be for downward dog, except my feet are further spread apart. I'm going to pick up one hand. I'm going to take the opposite foot and I'm going to shoot it through the hole. The goal is to get your foot here and hold it. Okay, this is acceptable. If all you can do is pick up your hand and shoot your foot through and have your, your foot and your butt on the floor, that's a place to start. Okay, so hand up, shoot through. Other side, shoot through. Up, through, up, through. And then this is my favorite one and it's not gonna go away. It's gonna be here at least through the summer until we can all do this really well. Table, so my elbows are locked, hips are high, push my hips back, to an L sit. Table. L sit. Okay, we're going to go through that whole set again. So we come back to the beginning and we're doing lunges. And then back down to the sit out. So here, hand up, straight through, and back. This, this pose requires a lot of balance. Balance is a function of strength, particularly of core strength. So if you're having trouble with this, getting your foot up here and still balancing, do more sit ups. It's not just a matter of, you got to do this exercise too to master the, the bits of it, but the sit-ups are really what's going to make this work for you. And back to table to L-sit. I'll be right back. Give me like two seconds. Get a drink while you're doing it. While I'm gone. Okay, I'm back. You know it's hot out when I'm doing this workout in the kitchen because it's the only room downstairs that has an air conditioner and um, it's still sticky and hot. Okay, so. Um, we're working on accuracy. So particularly this week, my, from my point of view, accuracy in your stances and stance transitions, because we talked about power last month, and without proper stance, without proper stance transition, which you need accuracy for, you're not gonna get the power that you need. And also accurately picking your target. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start, I'm gonna start, if you're tongue shooter, you call this jingle chassis. If you're AK, you call it a front stance. So I'm in a front stance and I'm throwing a punch. I'm gonna rotate my hips away. You can rotate your feet away if you want to, you don't have to, I don't. But my transition here is to rotate away. My knees are away. So if I turned my foot a little bit more, I'd be in so over Jossie. And if I was gonna be freezing here, I would. And rotating back in for the punch. But if I'm doing this from a self-defense point of view, it's gotta be faster. So the only thing that's gonna rotate is my hips. So I'm gonna do it both ways. Okay, so what I want you to turn, start here, rotate on this heel, come to Sokoro Chassis, 
rotate it on again, come to jingle chassis. So go rip, jingle chassis. So go rip, jingle chassis. Other side. So go rip, jingle chassis. So go rip, jingle chassis. So go rip, jingle chassis. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna come back here. Um, this is actually in one of the black belt forms. We start here and so go rip, and you rotate on your back heel, jingle chassis, and punch. Block, punch, block, punch, block, punch, block, punch. And the same thing on the other side. I mean, so go rip chassis, block, rotate, and punch. What you have to make sure you do when you do your so go rip chassis is that my stance is really to that corner. Because if I make it more to this side, now when I rotate, I'm not in jingle chassis. This stance isn't wide enough to be stable. So this foot's gotta be out. Block, rotate on the back heel. Block, punch, block, punch, block, punch. Okay, we do a similar thing in King on Shona, which if you are Tung Tso, be blue or higher, you know this. If not, you understand the concepts of it. I'm gonna do a low block, and now I'm gonna rotate my hips away and center block. Okay, so if you wanna do like we did before, you can do your low block and rotate your whole foot away, jingle chassis facing there, and rotate back to the center block. But this is a self-defense scenario, so for speed's sake, I can do my low block, and I can either rotate on my heel for the chamber and step back in, or I can do my low block and just rotate my hips. Because this is a, a block. This is just a chamber. This is a block. If I was going to be doing a block over here, block, 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 then I would rotate on my heel. And if your brain is going, oh my God, I can't handle that. Just be aware that your hips have to be facing your target when you, when you do the strike. Okay, so the next one, um, cat stance. The whole reason for, well, the whole reason for cat stance is to get your head out of the way. So my head is here and somebody's throwing a punch at me there. By doing the cat stance without having to pick my feet off the floor, I've shifted my head a little bit further from what's hitting me. We're gonna actually set back now into a Japanese cat stance. So from here, I'm gonna take my, my legs are spread, my weight's centered. I'm gonna take my weight and bring it all over the back leg and turn. So I only have 10% of my weight here. It's just keeping me, I have to balance here. With this foot down, I don't have to balance. So I'm gonna come here, you can see, Weight centered over my feet. Somebody attack is coming from this side. So I'm gonna pull all my weight onto the back leg and turn and face the attack. So I'm gonna come here, weight centered. I'm gonna chamber. Attack's coming from there. I'm gonna bring all my weight onto my back leg, face the attack as I block. And now, with my weight's already here, I can pick it up in front kick. Okay, so same thing on the other side. I look, there's an attack coming. Weight center, I'm gonna pull it all over my back foot and block. And then 90% of my weight's here, so I can bring that foot up and kick. Look, shift your weight with away from what's coming at you, kick. Look, shift your weight away from what's coming at you, kick. Shift, kick. Shift, kick. If you don't have that down yet, do it a few more times. Okay, and then one more thing here. We're gonna take the drill that we did. This is this is actually, it, it ties into Basadai, it ties into the form that the black belts are doing this cycle. Um, here is my chingle chassis, my front stance. This is a front stance if you're in Tung Sudo. Um, I'm going to rotate on this heel, so now I'm in a Soko Rip chassis a toes out horse stance. Then I am going to take my front foot and turn it towards my target and shift. So again, when the last drill that we did, your weight was here, your weight center. We turned all the way to 90% of your weight here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this foot and I'm gonna turn it that way and I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna pick my heel off the floor. We're gonna take the weight off my heel and shift. So I haven't moved this far, but I still moved my head a little bit away from the target and now I have 60% of my weight here, and only 40 here, rather than the 50-50 split that I had here. So from the side, it looks like this. I'm in shingle chassis or front stance. 
I'm going to rotate on this heel to sober chassis horse stance, and then I'm going to shift my weight back. Rear leaning stance or hoo cool chassis. Okay, same thing in the other direction. Triple chassis front stance. Rotate on the heel. Sober chassis. Take the weight off that heel. Shift back rear leaning stance. Okay, so single chassis. Rotate on the heel. Sober work chassis. Take the weight off the front heel, rear leaning stance. Switch stance. Jungle chassis. Rotate on the back heel. Silk rope chassis, horse stance. Take the weight off the front heel. Push your weight back a little bit. Rear leaning stance. So for a lot of you guys, that one's really gonna mess with your brain. So do it a bunch of times. Turn off the video if you need to, and do it a bunch of times, and when we come back, we'll get into your regular class. Okay, tongue to dough week 21a so this is a video that goes up monday so if you're taking class like monday or tuesday this is what we will be doing so we're talking this month about accuracy so we're going to start up working some kicks so i'm going to use the edge of my table as a target when you do a front kick you're hitting with the ball of your foot if you're wearing shoes um especially if they're boots or not flexi shoes you can hit with the whole bottom of your foot but right now i'm in bare feet so I'm going to start here. My chamber comes up. It's a front kick chamber straight up. And then I'm going to push. That's not a front kick. Well, I guess it technically is a front kick, but it's not a useful front kick. What makes this useful here is as I kick, I push. So we, last month we talked about power. Power comes from rotation and it comes from backup mass. Um, so when I push, I'm rotating my hips and I'm pushing my weight forward. So there's my power and my backup, my rotation and my backup mass. And then I want to hit the target with the ball of my foot. So my knee's going to come up. I'm going to hit and push and back. Up, push, back. Trying not to push the table into the window. So I'm, I'm, um, I'm yeah, stopping it here. Push, in, back. Up, out, in, back. And then other foot. Make sure you have the push. Without the push, it's just like a, it's just a rocket kick, which is cool, but it's not useful from a self-defense point of view. Okay, so we're gonna go through three kicks and then I'm gonna give you a drill that I want you to do off camera. Okay, round kick. When I do a round kick, in class, we tend to hit with the top of the foot with the instep. You're gonna do less damage to someone in class that way. But if you're wearing sandals or soft shoes and you hit something hard with that, you're gonna hurt yourself. I'm more inclined to kick with my shin. Yes, if you hit something hard with your shin, you're gonna break it. But if I'm hitting somebody's groin or the inside of their leg or even the side of their knee, I'm gonna do way more damage to them with my shin than I'm gonna to do to myself with my instep kick. But for now, we're gonna use the instep because I don't really wanna hit the table with my shin. So I'm gonna start here, you can see me, right? And when I chamber for my roundhouse kick, my standing foot's that way, and my hips are here. I should actually be here, but yeah. So then I'm gonna chamber up, and I kick so the top of my foot hits the target. So my knee comes up, it's not here. You can see you can see this the way the table's here. This doesn't work as a target. It's going to be back here, and I kick. If you're hitting something that's not the table like that, as I kick, you can pull your hips forward a little bit, and that's where you're going to you're going to have some rotation as you pull the hips forward, and a little bit of backup mass moving it into it as you strike. But you don't want your knee here for the chamber. The knee's going to be back here. So kick. And on the other side. And then we're gonna do a ball roundhouse kick. A ball roundhouse kick is a very traditional tongue pseudo kick. You're supposed to hit with the ball of your foot like you would with the front kick. So I would start here. I would chamber my knee up and I would hit with the ball of my foot rather than the top of my foot or my shin. If you do this in bare feet, it's very easy to break your toes. However, think about steel-toed boots, work boots, 
uh, pointy-toed boots or fancy shoes. Kick them with you. You don't ever want to kick something with your toes and bare feet, but if you've got huge heavy boots on and you kick something straight on like that, so I come here, I turn my foot, knee up, kick. I got my toes pulled back, but if I was wearing big boots, you wouldn't be able to see the toes pulled back. They would be inside. So I'm going to do the same thing, but assuming I have boots on, I think you get boots if you want, but that seems kind of silly. Um, I'm going to bring my an up and kick. So up and kick with the tip of the boot. So if you want to put boots on that, to, boots on to try that, but it may make your partner for the next drill not so happy. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to get somebody who lives in your house. You might have to bribe them to get them to do this with you. I will make you brownies. I will go to the grocery store for you. I'll do, I don't care what it is, but get somebody in your house who's willing to come and help you and have them hold a target. Um, ideally, take your if you have a focus pad, that's great. Uh, but you can take a piece of paper with an X drawn on it. You can take a pillow and you can put a, a tape X on the middle of it. And they're going to hold you, hold it up, and you're going to hit it, whatever kick they tell you to, with the right part of the foot. So if they say front kick, you're going to hit that X with the ball of the foot. If they say front kick with shoes on, you're going to hit that X with the whole bottom of your foot. If they say roundhouse kick, you're going to hit the X with either the top of your foot or your shin. And if they say round ball roundhouse kick, you're going to hit... If you're wearing bare feet with the ball of your foot, or if you went and got your boots, you're gonna hit with the tip of your toes. Okay, so get somebody in your house who's willing to practice that and do that with them. Okay, then we are gonna go on to some self defenses. I know we're not doing self defenses where we'd be throwing people, but these are concepts that we pull out of the forms because the forms are about self defenses, and we can take the self defenses and we can make them into forms. Okay, so the first one is we're going to work, it's from a sotagari. A sotagari means major outside reap, and it's a sweep. But the sweep is kind of the, the just the frosting of the cake. The self-defense is to get out of the way. The violence is the attack, and then the throw is just the, the, the cherry at the end, the cherry on top of the cupcake. So somebody's, we can do this inside or outside. Somebody's throwing a punch in my head. You got to get out of the way. Accuracy. If you do not get out of your head out of the way, it doesn't matter how accurate the rest of your techniques are, you're going to be unconscious and it's not going to matter. So they're coming at you and you get out of your way and block and you're going to parry and then you're going to step in. And if they're the same height as you, which is the assumption I'm going on right now, whatever part, you're going to get right in tucked up against their ribs and whatever part of your arm, depending on how wide they are and how wide you are and how close your arm gets to their throat, it's going to come right up onto their throat. So I'm going to come here, block, parry, break, um, clothesline. And if you watch when I do the clothesline, so I get out of the way block, I'm blocking their arm. The parry comes underneath, and then I'm going to turn this and step and rotate my hips and my shoulder. Power comes from there. You need it to accurately strike. So facing in the other direction, punch is coming at me. I get out of the way. I parry and I strike. So I want you to practice that. Practice it a bunch of times. If you can get somebody in your house to attack you and practice it, so much the better. Then you can also do a sword guard from the inside. If somebody throws a straight punch at you, actually, if they throw anything at you, inside is a really bad place to be. However, sometimes you have no choice but to be there. So what we're going to do right now, they're going to throw the punch at me and I'm going to get out of the way. But if I go block, Parry on the inside. I'm all wide open while they're doing that, so I'm not going to do that. They're going to throw the punch, I'm going to get out of the way, they're going to block and punch at the same time. Then I'm going to reach up and grab their shoulder and hop in and throw a knee. So punch is coming at me. Get your head out of the way, that's the most important part. Block and punch. The punch, top two knuckles to the solar plexus. Reach up, grab the back of the neck, knee. Now when I do my knee, I'm not hitting with my kneecap. You're going to do more damage to yourself if you hit with your kneecap. I'm hitting with this muscle above my knee. And just like when you do your front kick, your power comes from your, your weight pushing forward and your hips rotating. My power comes from the same place when I do a knee. So you're throwing the punch at me out of the way. Block and punch. Knee. Okay, so those are, those are two, varieties, two ways of defending the punch. It's going to end in the same place eventually. Out to the outside or to the inside. <clears throat> Again, if you can find somebody in your house to practice with you, bribe them with whatever you need to. Um, you're probably getting sick of each other right now. We're like, how many months into this? But get them to get them to uh, to help you with this. Then 
The next one that we're going to do <clears throat> is sword cut. And this one is a very hard concept to explain without people. However, the beginning of it is just a very basic. Somebody's coming at you, they're swinging, we call, we call it sword cut, not because they're cutting you with a sword, but because the throw at the end is a sweeping motion, like if you had a sword in your hand and you're cutting through. So that's why it's called sword cut. It's actually, it's meant to be an overhead attack. It can be overhead with a stick, it can be overhead just with their hand. You want to block though, even if they have something in their hand, you want to block their arm. Because if you block their stick, your arm's going to get broken. So something is coming at me, and I'm going to get out of the way, and I'm going to block here. Then I'm going to reach up, okay? This is a very technical term, okay? Turkey head, turkey butt. Okay, you ever draw a turkey when you were a kid? You put your hand on the paper, and you draw, and there's the turkey's head, and you put the little feet, okay? So turkey head, turkey butt. So I'm going to get out of the way. I'm going to block. Then I'm going to reach up my hands and take turkey head and turkey butt and turn so that I have a wrist lock. That's what gives me control. We work on positioning. Um, I may, I'll see if I can find somebody who will let me set this up with them with masks and gloves and hazmat suits if we have to. So I can show you the body position. But the important thing here is to get out of the way. So they're coming at you. You're going to get out of the way and block. If you block here or even block here, Chances are the person who's attacking you is probably bigger than you are, and they are stronger than your arm. So you have to get out of the way. You're going to get out of the way and block, turkey head, turkey butt, and that's going to make the wrist lock. So get somebody, practice that with them. Um, preferably give them a noodle or something, especially if you're getting really sick of each other after being quarantined for, what, five months or being into this? Um, don't let them hit you in the head. Okay, now, forms. Uh, beginners, I'm going to mess with your brain big time on the forms. Um, this is, if you know your forms well, in order to know your forms well, you have to be able to do them without thought. So if you've been taking class with me the last few months, the beginner forms particularly, I've been making you do in both directions, backwards. In, so we do it like to the left, which is where we normally go, and to the right. But this is something <clears throat> that Mr. McCoy used to do to us when I was a guy, and I hated it. Made me crazy, not because, not because it was a bad drill, but because I was so bad at it and it made me really aggravated to not be able to do something well. Okay, so I can do it reasonably well with the beginner forms now, but with Vasa Dai, it's still really terrible. So I'm gonna start here, it's called VCR forms. So I'm gonna just do basic form one right now. And I'm gonna look, and I'm gonna block. And then I come back. So VCR, if you're too young to remember VCR, after you watch the tape, you had to push the button so it rewound. So we're rewinding it. I don't know how many of you don't remember that. Um, probably a lot of you. So I'm going to look, low block, punch. Then I have to come back through the low block and back to the beginning. It's not so bad yet. It's going to get worse. Low block, punch, low block. Back to this punch, back to the low block. And if you're going, ha, I'm a black belt. That's the beginning form. I don't have to do it. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I'll got to do this drill. Okay? So, low block punch, low block, punch, and rewind it. Okay, keep going. Okay, so I want you to take that form, and I want you to do at least the whole first half VCR. It would be great if you could do the whole thing. If you can do the whole thing, send me video and I will post it. But I want you to try to do at least the first half. Then we're gonna do Chil Sung Ilro the same way. This is harder. I haven't practiced this. So we'll see. I haven't practiced this in probably 20 years, so we'll see how this goes. I do low block. Zero goes on the other side now. Oh, that's it. That's back to the beginning. I forgot to do the next move. See, I have VCR too soon.
Same deal. Half of the form. If you can do the whole thing, send me video and I will post it. Basadai. I haven't done this to Basadai since I was a green belt. This is the point at which Mr. McCoy introduced VCR forms to me. And I just thought this was the cruelest thing that anybody could have done to me. I hated doing this. I haven't practiced it since I was a green belt. So we'll see how this goes. Here, out, out. Yeah, it's pretty ugly. <clears throat> Mess with that. If you can send me the circle, if you can do the whole circle on that one, all the way to down and out, forward and back, without having to see the, the thoughts going, send me that. Chuck Norris is short. Let's see. I've never practiced this with DCF, so we'll see how this goes. Made a mistake on the second to last one. I had the kick in the and the back fist in the wrong direction. So that one, two phrases. If you can do the whole two phrases, um, bonus if you can do the tornado kick backwards. I don't think I can unwind the tornado kick. But if you send me the two phrases, I will post it. Okay, so um, for that's the other thing I wanted to do. Um, I want to do. You're going. How come she didn't finish the form? Because it's Monday. Thursday, we'll finish Basta Dye and we will finish the short Chuck Norris form. But what I want to do is I want to show you, if you're a beginner, you're still working on those VCR forms. I want to show you Basta Dye up to where we are from a different angle. If I show it to you frontwards, for half of it, you can't see me because you have my back. If I show it to you backwards, for half of it, you can't see me because you have my, I have, you have my back. So I'm going to do it sideways. Um, it's going to be stunted because there's bricks here, because I don't want to run into and there's a table there. But this way, if you set the video up and you can stand sideways to it, at least you can see it from both angles. So I'm going to start here. to the bricks, it's gonna hurt.
to get credit for the class. Send me pictures or video on Facebook Messenger. Do not tag me under the video. Sometimes weeks later, I'll get these tags. So if that person tagged you weeks ago and you're going, how come she didn't answer? Because it didn't show up. If you are under 18, have your parents send me the message because I cannot even answer you if you're under 18. So um, pictures or video, Facebook Messenger to get credit and I'll talk to you guys later in the week.